startup kind of tier level competition. How would you assess where you are right now, where you want to be? Uh, obviously, you know, everybody's got a chance to play. Like I thought the exhibition games were really good. Um, you know, Sanford and Moorhead State, uh, you know, won their leagues last year. And, and so you're playing teams that have that won championships. And, you know, it's early in the season. I think a lot of coaches like to ease their way into it. I think that's slowly changing. I think just with you know your net ranking and everything that goes into trying to get into the tournament and then trying to get a, the best seed possible. So obviously, being able to play Xavier through the Gavit games, I think that's going to be the challenge for us going forward. Is you know do we add another conference game? Do we add two other conference games? And then how do we kind of get those banked in games of this level? You know, without the ACC Big Ten Challenge and without the Gavit games. Like, you know, because I don't think a lot of people want to come in here and play in Mackey Arena, nor does a lot of schools want to go on the road and play. But I think that's what's best for, I know, us, is being able to try to get some home and home starting here and some home and home starting on the road. So um, this is going to be a, a physical game. This is going to be a good game. Obviously, he's a great coach and has been very, very successful in his career. So, um, We've competed against his teams, and they always lay it on the line. Um, they always defend. Um, offensively, they're playing very fast, and they're really, really pushing the basketball and kind of watching them on film and, and then realizing they only have one guy that's playing currently that was with them last year that's getting in games. Um, it's pretty amazing the way the way they played and some of the things that they were able to do with just one returner. So, but that's kind of right, right, the landscape of college basketball, especially when you, you get a job. So he gets a job, he coaches for a year. Now you go into your second year, sometimes that shift can happen either immediately or that first year right after. What do you see in their front court being down a three man? Excuse me? What do you see in their front court being down a couple guys? Well, those guys that they have are, you know, they're new to the system, but they're pretty good players. Like they're physical and. Uh, the one, the big kid that you know transferred from North Texas is a very physical post. Um, he scored the ball in the last game with a couple of nice post moves. The other guys are good players. They can, one can drive the basketball, um, but but they all lay it on the line. They all embrace the physicality of the game, um, get on the glass, and I, I think that for us, it's going to be important to try to keep them off the glass. I think it's going to be important for them. They do a great job of sealing in the post, of just not getting buried down there. But a very, very physical front court. And the guys that sub in form are the same way. They're, they're very, very physical. How hard is it to scout other teams' defenses when you know they're going to have to play against Edie and right. pretty much have to have home? Well, it's a little bit of guesswork if you haven't like went through a season or you haven't you know played them before when you've had him. So like, there's no way they can do something that we haven't seen. But like, it doesn't mean that like when they start to do it, like it's something that we've prepared for because they haven't doubled so far. So if they're going to play one on one and keep you know playing one on one, which some teams have done, um, then you play it one way. If they double ball side or they double with their biggest guy, or um, everyone's a little bit different, or they come baseline side, there's you know only so many things that you can do. Um, at times, people don't guard people and they just back up. So we just try to prepare for everything in a, in a situation like this because you ultimately you know. You always have a little bit of guesswork from watching them on film, but when they've only played two games and they haven't doubled, you know, you gotta just work on multiple things just so you're prepared for everything. Would it seem, Trump, go ahead. Would it seem like Xavier that relies heavily on their backcourt? Do you think this is kind of a night where we can really see the Zach and Trey kind of connection in the post? Um, sure, um, if it presents itself. Like, you know, you, you gotta be able to get the ball where you want it to get, you know? And so if you're gonna try to play out of the low post, you know, you got to be able to get that position. And then with their physicality, you know, I think that's a, that's a big question. You know, can we do that? But, um, yeah, there's no question that we're going to try to get the ball inside no matter who we're playing. The first two teams have gotten a lot of offensive rebounds. Do you view that as Who's something that? you can – The first two teams you oh, played okay. have gotten a lot of offensive yeah. rebounds. Do you view that as two teams shooting a lot of threes, missing a lot of threes, and the ball just – A little bit of that, but on. also – Part of it is us not boxing out and, and getting those rebounds. I think we got to do a better job rebounding the basketball in those scenarios. And it gets, you know, when you shoot tough threes, like the ball squirts out a little bit differently, but it's your job to get them. You know, it's on the court, get the basketball. So we got to do a better job of finding those loose balls and those long rebounds. Is the chess match uh, really kind of trying to slow them down with their backcourt and 
you talked about them wanting to play fast. I think you want to play fast in transition. Yeah. Maybe which team can slow the other team down and disrupt them the most. Yeah, you know, if you take care of the basketball and you take good shots, I think that really helps. You know, if you're going to play in transition and you're turning the ball over, you're taking bad shots, now you're going to be behind a lot. So I think that's going to be important for both teams is to be able to just have quality possessions, take care of the basketball, and take good shots. I, I think if we can do that, we, we, we really help ourselves setting our defense because you got to slow them down. Like if you just if they're just going to get and push the basketball and just do whatever they want, and you can't build walls and keep them out of the paint, then it's going to be a long night for us. Um, and on the flip of it, you know we want to push the basketball, we want to get in transition, we want to create some of those opportunities by dominating the glass, getting some deflections and some turnovers, and, and stealing some easy points. Is a Lance Jones thirty footer a good shot? What's that? Is a Lance Jones thirty footer a good shot? Um, <laughs> I'd prefer it was him. Last game. Yeah, I told him in the game if it was a four pointer, it'd make a lot of sense. Um, I said, but it's just three. I said, just step in. The thing that happens with that is if you don't play on the arc and you're way out, like you're one dribble, when you're on the arc, you're one dribble away from the basket and you can feed the post and you can shoot a three. When you're out there, you can't feed the post and you're two dribbles away from getting a layup. So, Everything is better there. Now, sometimes you get pushed out and you can't help it. But a lot of those, like, he, he likes spotting up and shooting deep threes. Um, but I, I don't see the purpose. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously he got hot and made a couple of them. But one was way out there that he – one was way out that he missed and one was way out that he made. So uh, You started playing trick off net before this year. And that's kind of moved uh, Caleb first to the back of the five. Yeah. Uh, what have you seen from his minutes so far in these first two games? And what's the expectations kind of going forward with Caleb? For Caleb, yeah, I feel very comfortable like, you know, Mason, Trey, or Caleb being in that spot. Um, obviously, uh, Caleb and Mason have shared time there in the past. And then we didn't play Trey there. We played him a little bit in non-conference last year. And we just thought with, you know, his improvements and his post-up game with Zach and some attention going away from Zach, people like really paying attention and allow him to be a one-on-one -on -one post player right there. Um, but it, it's something that's not permanent. Like It's not one of those things. I think Mason um, really stretches the defense, his ability to shoot threes, like puts people in binds. Um, you know, Caleb has, has done a really good job. His athleticism is really kind of what stands out. We need him to use his motor. You know, he's done a great job at diving and he gets those dunks. You saw in the last game, his ability to, you know, to dive and just kind of be around the basketball. Um, he didn't knock down any of his perimeter shots, but um, just got to, you know, keep taking those good ones and keep taking those ones in rhythm. After the Moorhead game, I think you categorized your defense as just all right. Yes. Watching the film, is it energy, effectiveness? What did you see? That you it was just all right. <laughs> um, just a lot of little things, you know, like just not kind of finishing like plays more than anything. Um, I thought we were just kind of a day late, dollar short on a lot of, you know, different actions that they were running and just being detailed. And then we got off the scouting report on certain things and how we were going to defend it. Um, and, and that's the one thing that, that really breaks up your defense is when, when guys, you know, don't follow, you know, how you're going to guard things and what you're going to do. You guys have walked into enough practices and you see us finish practice and we talk about this is what we're going to do. And then we watch film and say, this is what we're going to do. And we walk through the next day and say, this is what we're going to do. We hand them a scouting report. This is what we're going to do. So you do it about five or six times. And so when they don't do it, you know, you, you see why coaches like lose their mind. Now, if you're trying to do what we ask you to do and the other teams are like, you say their offense is better than our defense, like you can live with that. You don't like it, but you got somebody out there following the scouting report, doing what they're supposed to. Um, you know, you fragment us, you, you split us when you start doing things that are different than what we have talked about. And there's some things in basketball that, you know, you have gray area and you have things that you're going to read. And then there's some things that are just flat out absolutes. And this is what we're going to do, especially ball screen defense. Ball screen defense becomes absolutes um, and, and how you're going to do things. So we just got to be better. And I, I think we played hard. I think we swarmed the basketball um, and did a good job there, but our discipline wasn't very good. This game tomorrow is kind of the start of a tough stretch of games. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Tomorrow's game is going to kind of help navigate you through these tougher teams we're going to get ready to face? I hope so. If we play well, I think it'll help us navigate. I think anytime you you play a quality opponent like Xavier, and um, you're going to learn something. You, know, you want to learn something on the positive side and, and, and get better from it. But we're just, uh, I know it's coaches speak, right? But we're just focused on the next the next game. We're not worried about 10 games. So, But, but I understand your question. It's a, 
it's a pretty tough schedule, maybe the best schedule we've had.